order as far as like ascending or how many values there are in the text file, but you can just kind of click around on them and see how many values they have. So for my example, I'm using 50numbers.txt, but you can use any of those eight files that you would like. So let's take a look at the sorting panel class. There's, it's pretty thoroughly commented, I think you'll see. So um, most of it should be explained if you just want to read through it. I will, of course, remind you that when you update your project, make sure that you're also updating the comments at the top. So you should comment how you changed it and then throughout your code, comment it as well. I'm not going to say that it needs to necessarily be as thoroughly commented as it is right now, but you want to make sure that you're explaining what you're doing. So we'll skip over the comments and, of course, the imports. And let's get to our instance fields and constants. So there are three constants right at the top of this class. The first two simply deal with the height and the width of the panel. Nothing really to change there. The third one is important. If you want to sort the integers from a different text field, all you have to do is change this constant to the name of the new text file. But after that, we have a very important array named numbers. It contains integers. And this is the array that's going to hold all the sorted, or I guess initially unsorted numbers that our algorithms will be sorting. So before you start each of the individual sorting algorithms, you're basically going to recreate this array by reading the numbers in from the text file. Um, and you don't have to write that code. That's already been written for you, and I'll explain that in just a bit. Next, we have two Boolean values. These Boolean values are just used to start the sorting process and also just to display the right pieces of information. So while it's the data is being sorted, it will visualize, you'll visualize that data being sorted, and then really once it's finished, you're just going to have a screen that's going to display how many comparisons each of the individual sorting algorithms require. All right. Next we have some really important instance fields. The first one is an integer named comparisons. You'll use this integer during each of the sorting algorithms to track the number of comparisons that have been made. So it's really important that you do actually use this comparison instance field because later on we'll see in the paint component method that we're going to display this integer on the panel. So it's got to be this exact integer that you're using. Next two integers are also really important. They're compare index one and compare index two. Compare index one and compare index two will be used uh, again in your paint component method. So we're going to have different size rectangles. And uh, normally, well, at least from the starter code, they're all drawn in blue. But the two integers that are currently being compared should be drawn in red. And these two compare indexes are used to display the right rectangles or the correct right rectangles in red. All right, after that, we have a string named sorting name. Sorting name is again, uh, it's used just for displaying purposes. So you're gonna set this string equal to the name of the sorting algorithm that you're currently running. And then finally, I have a, another integer named bubble comparisons. Basically, after you complete each of your individual sorting algorithms, you're gonna have to have some sort of integer that is used to just store how many comparisons that uh, sorting algorithm used. So in this case, after I finish sorting the numbers using bubble sort, I'm just going to set bubble comparisons equal to the value that comparison was so that I can then use comparisons to keep track of my next sorting algorithm. I hope that makes sense. If not, you can send me an email. I'll try to do a better job explaining that piece. All right, after the instance fields, we have our constructor. I'm just going to skip over this because really all it's doing is just initializing our instance fields. Not a whole lot to say there. Following our constructor, we have a method named swap. You don't need to modify this method in any way, but what you should do is call this method whenever your sorting algorithm swaps two values in your array. All right, and I am going to ask that you actually call this swap method as opposed to just swapping them in place in your methods. So this function is passed two integers, i and j. 
these integers are just going to be the indexes of the values that are going to be swapped. You can see that we're doing just that using a rather traditional swap algorithm. And then finally, we repaint our panel. And that brings up an important point. We want to make sure that every single time our sorting algorithm either compares two values or swaps two values that we do repaint our panel so that you know we're illustrating the sorting algorithm. All right, following up our swap function, I have my bubble sort function. This bubble sort function works. It's not optimized, and uh, I think at some point I'll explain how it's going, it needs to be optimized either in this video or perhaps I'll just type it up and include it on my Blackboard. But I'm not going to walk you through every line of bubble sort here except to point out a couple important pieces. First of all, inside of these nested loops, you'll see that I'm updating our comparisons integer. So um, I guess you can see right here, uh, where am I making the comparisons? Right down there. I guess I could have updated a bit later, but that's okay. Uh, I'm, I know that I'm going to make a comparison, so I'm going to iterate my comparisons value. Um, I'm also updating the two compare index variables to uh, to be the values of the, I guess, the indexes that are going to be compared. Again, you can see right here, I'm checking to see if numbers at i is greater than numbers at i plus 1. So I'm again comparing the value at compare index 1 to the value at compare index 2. If I wanted to, I guess I could have even just instead of putting i, I could have said compare index 1 here and compare index 2 there. Either would have the same effect, doesn't really matter. All right. Again, I'm repainting my panel because I want to demonstrate the values being compared. And when we run it, this will just look like a bunch of red rectangles moving up and down the screen. Finally, if my numbers are out of order in my array, I'm calling my swap method, and the swap method is going to swap the values in the array. All right, after my bubble sort function, I have two functions or methods that you really shouldn't modify. The first is resize array. It's used by the create array function. This create array function reads a bunch of values or all the values from our file and adds them to the array. You don't modify or should not modify this function. I'm not sure why I didn't make it private. I guess I could do that. But regardless, you shouldn't modify this function. You will absolutely call this function though. You should call this function before you start each of your sorting algorithms. After create array, we have a two string function. I just put it there in case you want to use it for debugging purposes. I haven't used it at all right now, but again, it's there if you want it. Okay. Now to the all important paint component function. Again, I'm not going to walk you through every line of code here, but let's look at the important parts. First of all, I've got this variable called variable called finished. So if we have not yet finished all the sorting algorithms, we're going to paint each of the rectangles. So we're iterating through our array. And if we're currently looking at, well, if we're at a spot in our array where we're, you know, it's that's equal to either of our compare indexes. Sorry for not saying that particularly well. But again, if we're currently at a rectangle that is being compared, we're going to set our color to red so that the rectangle will show up in red. If we're not, then we're going to just set the color to cyan so all the other numbers will show up in cyan, which I guess is an off blue. After we set the color, we're going to draw a rectangle. So the bigger the number, the taller the rectangle will be. So this draws a, the rectangle itself, and then I just have some code that draws an outline around it. You can change these colors. Students in the past have um, made the uh, sorted numbers into a rainbow, so they set the color of the uh, rectangle also based on the height of the rectangle. You can change that, or you can just choose an arbitrary color if you'd like. After that, we have some code that draws the name of the current sorting algorithm and again the current number of comparisons that have been made all right so again this first block of code right here will run until we've finished the actual sorting of all of our well using all of our sorting algorithms all right if we uh, are finished so once we have finished 
we're going to do the same thing that we're going to draw all the rectangles and this time without the red rectangles and then instead of displaying you know just one sorting algorithm at a time on the bottom right hand corner and one comparison counter on the bottom left hand corner you're going to update this code so this is one of the first pieces of code that you're going to absolutely have to update you're going to update this code to print out each of the sorting algorithms names that you use along with the number of comparisons that each of those particular sorting algorithms used okay. so down here uh, we now have I guess the last bit of code how about that so this function is uh, well excuse me this if statement is just checking to see if we haven't started once we start the sorting process we basically don't want to restart it again so that's the whole reason behind this start variable so you can see uh, if we haven't yet started then we're going to start the process we'll change the state of our start boolean variable so that we don't start it again and uh, here's the four lines of code that are necessary to start bubble sort you're basically going to have to repeat these four lines of code um, for each of your different sorting algorithms that you're going to implement so you can see i am creating my array using the create array function. I'm also setting the sorting name equal to bubble sort because that's the sorting algorithm that I'm getting ready to illustrate. I'm calling my bubble sort function, which will in fact sort the numbers using bubble sort. And then once that function has completed, so once it's done sorting using bubble sort, I'm gonna set my bubble comparisons instant field, instance field, excuse me, equal to that comparisons counter. Now that comparisons counter will be set back equal to zero in that create array function, so you don't have to worry about doing that. But again, you're going to basically down here call all the sorting algorithms that you're going to write. And what sorting algorithms do you need to implement? Well, you have to implement insertion sort, selection sort, and then choose any two other sorting algorithms that you'd like. I'd encourage you to not implement sorting algorithms that use recursion. It's not something we've talked about yet. It's a rather difficult subject, but I guess even more importantly, it can just be really difficult to illustrate. So I think you could probably write the code to sort, but I don't know if you could write the code that would illustrate the sorting process using any sort of recursive method. So uh, again, insertion sort, selection sort, bubble sort, and then choose two others. You cannot use something like BOGO sort or shotgun sort. You can look those up if you're curious what they are. Um, but basically they're just random sorts. You need to use legit sorting algorithms. The other piece that you're going to do is you have to update or improve bubble sort. So right now, if I was to run bubble sort, you'll see uh, we're basically, well, the numbers, the bigger numbers are bubbling up to the top, which is what bubble sort is kind of named after. But if you'll notice over here, this is the sorted portion of our array, but look, the red rectangles continue up past the sorted portion of the array. And that's because we haven't optimized bubble sort. Basically, in bubble sort, as I've already stated, all the big numbers bubble up to the top, and there's just no reason to uh, continue to check this sorted portion of the array. So we're going to greatly improve the efficiency of our sorting algorithm by not sorting or, I guess, comparing the sorted portion of the array. So that's the first improvement that you need to make. You need to modify the bubble sort algorithm so that instead of continuing through the end of the array, even though that end is sorted, it should stop where the um, sorted numbers or the sorted portion of the array begins. So that's gonna really make a huge difference in the efficiency of bubble sort. So that's the first improvement that you need to make. The other improvement that I'm going to ask you to make isn't quite 